If there's a right way to do something, then there's usually a wrong way. Luckily, many tasks limit the effects of attempting something the wrong way. For example, there are very few things that one can do to improperly turn on a light switch. Unfortunately, landing an airplane does not fall into such a simplified category. Mastering the normal landing, much less any of the variations on the technique, such as short field and soft field landings, is challenging. Every pilot throughout training and during routine flights will encounter the numerous difficulties known as faulty approaches and landings. While this video will contain content on how to recognize and recover from a variety of situations, one cannot stress enough the importance of recognizing when to perform a go-around. Landings are not meant to be saved. With the immense number of variables present in any given approach, pilots are tasked with evaluating and correcting any changes that occur in the approach path. Generally, minor corrections are required. If at any time the approach becomes unstable, major corrections are required, or the pilot feels they should go around, an immediate go-around maneuver should be executed. Novice and experienced pilots alike should rely on the stabilized approach criteria. As experience is gained, pilots will also develop a sixth sense for go-arounds, but sometimes fail to execute this maneuver anyway. Trust this sense. While situations and errors with an approach and landing are truly infinite, analysis and experience has led the FAA to group some of the most common issues into 15 sections in the Airplane Flying Handbook. This first podcast in the series, Faulty Approaches and Landings, will begin with four of these sections. Low Final Approach, High Final Approach, Slow Final Approach, and Floating During Roundout. Each of these possible errors, low, high, slow, and floating, share the common thread of energy management during the approach and landing phase. In a simple mechanical system, there are two forms of mechanical energy to consider, potential and kinetic. According to the law of conservation of energy, energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transferred between types of energy. No system is perfect in terms of these conversions. Potential energy is the energy of position, the aircraft's altitude. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, airspeed for the pilot. In a perfect system, the sum of these two forms will equal the total energy available. Glider pilots absolutely live by the knowledge that a pilot can exchange airspeed for altitude or altitude for airspeed. Because of the energy expended during the production of lift and overcoming drag, these exchanges are not perfect, and there will always be a net loss in energy available for altitude and airspeed over time. In a powered aircraft, the engine converts the energy stored in fuel into mechanical energy to make up for these losses during level flight. During the approach, the pilot is controlling the exchange of energy so that kinetic energy directed towards the ground is at a minimum when potential energy reaches zero, which would basically be when the aircraft contacts the ground. To do this, the pilot controls drag, or the configuration, power, airspeed, and altitude. Although situations are limitless, there are a finite number of tools the pilot can work with. Pitch, power, and flaps. With this in mind, let's analyze some of the situations a pilot will face relating to energy management. The Airplane Flying Handbook mentions a number of reasons why the pilot could be positioned well below the proper final approach path. Base leg too low, insufficient power, landing flaps extended early, misjudged wind. Loss of obstruction clearance and the inability to make the runway are two major hazards of flying too low of an approach. If a pilot attempts to recover from this situation incorrectly, it could also result in a low altitude stall. To avoid these hazards, it is critical to recognize and correct for an approach before it becomes too low and too much potential energy is lost. 
Recognizing a low approach is best accomplished by referencing visual glide path indicators such as the VASI or PAPI. During the day, a secondary reference could be the appearance of the runway numbers. If they appear squished and difficult to read, you're definitely too low. If the runway lacks these references, then it's important to know from experience how the proper glide path appears and the altitudes and distances expected during the approach. While I personally preach using an aim point, this reference will not directly tell you if you are high or low. It will only indicate if you are flying to a specific spot on the runway. If the aiming point rises in the windscreen, the aircraft is flying short of that position. Trust your instincts and do not hesitate to go around if necessary. Now, what if a go around is not necessary and the aircraft is only slightly low? Then the pilot must adjust to re-establish the aircraft on the proper glide path. In terms of energy, slightly low means that there is not enough potential energy. To fix this, energy must be exchanged and added to get back to the proper glide path. Because the aircraft is on the back side of the power curve, speed will decrease rapidly for any increase in pitch. To account for this, power should be increased for any increase in pitch. Even if speed is just slightly high, there will likely need to be an increase in power, even if it's only a small increase. Once the proper approach path is intercepted, pitch and power must be readjusted to stay on the approach.